All right. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for taking your time uh, today to join us for an ABLE United webinar. My name is John Finch. I'm the director of the program and wanted to thank you all for taking some time to join us today to answer your question. Um, we only have a handful of people today, so what I plan on doing, um, there's a couple ways you can ask questions. One, there is a question submission box on the right-hand side. Uh, in, the, in the actual GoToWebinar app. So if you want to ask your questions in there, that'd be appropriate. Uh, but there's only a few of us today, and so I was thinking of unmuting everybody. Uh, and then if you could self-mute yourself, that way we can make it a little more interactive. You can ask questions as we go along in the process. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to unmute everybody. Um, and so if, if you would like to speak, uh, feel free. If not, you can go ahead and mute yourself. And then I will, or you can raise your hand as well if you would like to um, mute yourself, or if you want to unmute, if you would like to speak, you can use the hand raiser icon as well to answer any questions. So let's go ahead and get started. My name is John Finch. I'm the director of the Florida ABLE uh, program, ABLE United. And I just want to thank you all for taking time. Uh, hopefully today you'll learn uh, as much as I can relate to you about the ABLE United program, as well as give you some. Uh, some exciting news on uh, recent updates to our program uh, as part of a, a recent conversion we went through. Uh, so let's let's go through. Uh, we'll take a high-level uh, overview of ABLE accounts, and then we'll actually dig into some of the nitty-gritty. So first of all, uh, what is an ABLE United account? What can it do for you? Uh, we have this tagline, Save Like Never Before. So it's truly a, a new program and a new product that uh, for specifically designed for individuals with disabilities. In high level, it's a tax advantage, uh, tax-free savings and investment account established to support uh, disability-related expenses for individuals with disabilities, uh, meanwhile being able to uh, allow them to maintain eligibility for government benefits. Um, so that's, that's in a nutshell what an ABLE account is. Um, and we're ABLE United, which is specific to Florida as we are the state of Florida's ABLE program. Uh, what are some of the new features that we've had and that, that we want to highlight throughout this presentation is the ability to save like never before with the help of uh, a new gifting page we have. This page is unique to each uh, individual ABLE account holder. They can set it up and then they can uh, have that uh, unique URL sent out to their family members to help them contribute uh, in helping them reach their savings goal. Uh, you, the purpose of the account, which we'll talk about a little bit more in detail in the next few slides, is you're saving tax-free for future expenses. Uh, these are after-tax dollars that go into the account, but the funds in the account can grow tax-free. And then finally, we'll talk about our one of our new products, an FDIC investment option that really allows uh, individuals who do not want to invest but rather save, uh, that functionality now exists with an FDIC savings option. So, why an ABLE account? Why would you put money into an ABLE account and what are you using it for? The purpose of an ABLE account is to save for qualified disability expenses. Uh, and the Treasury kind of gave you some broad categories here that I'm sharing with you as you see on this um, chart. Uh, these expenses include health, education, housing, transportation, legal fees, oversight and monitoring, and even funeral burial. So there's a wide range of how you can use these expenses. Uh, and the, the purpose of it is that the funds are supposed to be used to either help maintain or improve an individual's health, independence, or quality of life. And so um, it's also doesn't, it's not limited to the sole benefit of an individual. Uh, so it's, for example, uh, let's say a person with a visual impairment needs a very large screen uh, to, to work on, um, but if somebody else happened to use that screen as well, um, as long as the primary benefits for the individual with disability, it could be a qualified disability expense. The only example that the Treasury did provide was, let's say you have somebody that's autistic and uh, needs help navigating the community as well as communicating. Well, if they had a cell phone and a cell phone plan that would help them become more independent, that would be a qualified disability expense. Uh, and as you can see, it's, it's pretty broad. Usually we tell people, uh, it's easier to say what's not qualified. Uh, and so most likely that would be uh, gambling, uh, illegal drugs, alcohol, um, some forms of entertainment probably would not be a qualified disability expense. Uh, we usually tell people if individuals are receiving supplemental security income uh, that 
talk to your Social Security Administration uh, office if you believe that there might be uh, an issue with the qualified disability expense not qualifying. Uh, so we, we, we often relay that to you. And as always, keep your receipts. Keep any documentation um, of expenses you're using that could be considered qualified disability expenses in case, once again, Social Security asks, but ultimately IRS is the one that's managing these pro this program and overlooking uh, these types of accounts. So uh, documentation in case the IRS asks for, you know, what, what did you use these funds for? What kind of qualified disability expenses? And one of the key features of ABLE accounts that we talked about was what if you're receiving Medicaid? Um, and, and Medicaid is a is a government benefit that does have an asset limit of $2,000. Uh, so uh, maybe it's Medicaid waiver services or, or Medicaid health care services, uh, but those are a needs-based kind of program uh, that limits people to only $2,000 in, in resources on hand, uh, which isn't a lot of funding. Uh, and so now, generally speaking, funds in or withdrawn from an ABLE account are disregarded when determining eligibility for Medicaid. Uh, which is great, uh, great news. Uh, there was a caveat that if a beneficiary passed away and uh, after all their outstanding qualified disability expenses were paid, including funeral burial, uh, that those funds could be subject to Medicaid recovery um, more of as a, the Medicaid would have to go and request those funds instead of them just be given it to them. Uh, and it's only for people on Medicaid. However, here in the state of Florida, we were able to put in temporarily some, some language that would clarify that any leftover funds would go to the person's estate. And that's, if the state was subject to Medicaid estate recovery, then it would go through that process. Um, hopefully, we have two bills that are out there that we're closely watching, Senate Bill 1300 and House Bill 6047. If this passes and signed into law, then that this, this clause that is currently in, in statute would become permanent. So that's some good news. Um, if people were worried about um, Medicaid um, and if the beneficiary passed away. The next big uh, government benefit that really this is primarily geared towards uh, and aimed at as part of the structure when ABLE was created was um, what if an individual is receiving supplemental security income? Uh, so this is a, a, a monthly check that a beneficiary will receive uh, up to 750 or so dollars. Uh, it's limited once again on how much resources they have, which is $2,000 so they can't have much money in the bank. Um, and, and so which unique is able account and uh, now allows you to save above that. And so generally funds that are withdrawn from an able account are disregarded when determining eligibility for supplemental security income. There's a couple of caveats that um, Social Security did outline. First is um, the $100,000 uh, in an able account. Uh, the first $100,000 in an able account does not count as a resource. So if you hit that amount, uh, anything above that would count as a, as a towards that $2,000 resource limit. Um, another one is if an individual uses their ABLE account for housing and non-qualified expenses, they take money out uh, and do not use those types of expenses by the end of the end of the month, they could count as a resource. Um, and so we, we usually suggest people be wary of that if you're on supplemental security income. If you're planning on using this for housing, um, you, you can you know make sure you withdraw and then use that money by the end of the month. Um, and, and uh, just to give you a heads up, we do submit on a monthly basis uh, all program information to Social Security so they're able to, to track who has SSI and an ABLE account, and then they can look at, you know, how they're using their account. So if a withdrawal is made, uh, they might request additional documentation to, to show what the, those funds were used for. Well, we suggest to search the Internet and, and look at Social Security's uh, manual, which is their, their program operation manual system, which is POM. You can the website's listed here, and as well as you, if you search online, you could probably find it pretty easily. Uh, Able and Social Security gives you some additional details. Um, also, uh, in our handouts and that that app that's going on right now, the GoToWebinar app, you'll see on there uh, it's a couple handouts. We have our program description participation agreement, as well as today's presentation on there. So uh, you can download those and use them uh, as you see fit. All right, I'm just gonna check the questions real fast. Uh, all right, I have one question I think would be appropriate. Um, nope, just talking about uh, an individual that uh, decided to go ahead and mute themselves. So, um, thank you for that. So uh, yeah, but there's also a question submission bar. Once again, if you weren't here when we first started, feel free to 
ask questions throughout myself, uh, and I believe I have an assistant on as well that will help me uh, address any of those questions you might have. Let's keep going. So we kind of looked high level what an ABLE account was, how it relates to individual on benefits, um, and now we're going to kind of determine well, who, who's eligible to open an account. Um, now we kind of get the, the basics out. So uh, there's three eligibility requirements for, requirements for ABLE United. Uh, first, that the individual has to be a Florida resident at the time of application. That's the, the beneficiary, the person with a disability. That the disability had to have an onset prior to age 26, um, and that the disability has to be severe. Uh, it's also, you know, uh, that you can only have one ABLE account nationwide, uh, so that's, that's also something to make note of. So what does it mean that the disability has to be severe? Um, First, if you're receiving SSI or SSDI based on a disability that occurred prior to age 26, you're automatically qualified uh, for an ABLE account. You meet that severity requirement. But if you're not, uh, you're going to need some kind of diagnosis from a, from a physician basically saying that you have a physical or mental impairment that occurred prior to age 26 that has uh, what they call marked and severe functional limitations. Basically, you need assistance in order to, to maintain um, uh, your day-to-day -day kind of life, um, and that the disability is expected to last for at least 12 months. And we also provide a, uh, a physician diagnosis form on our website. So if you're in this kind of situation and you don't have any kind of documentation, you can um, find that form online, take it to a medical doctor uh, or your primary doctor and see if they, they, they can fill it out and saying, yes, that this person's disability meets these requirements, you know, occurred prior to age 26 and that it is severe. And that would, uh, you know, we wouldn't request that documentation, but you would, re you would maintain it in case the IRS was to ever uh, request for you to, to provide that documentation. Who owns the account? Uh, so now we know who's eligible, but who, who actually owns the funds? Is it the person that sets it up or is it the person with a disability? It's actually the person with a disability is the owner of the ABLE account. Uh, the funds in it are to be used to help um, provide them assistance and maintain that health. Uh, independence and quality of life. Uh, now we know that in all situations that the person with a disability would be able to uh, open and maintain their account. So we have uh, a way to allow somebody else to open an account on their behalf, such as a parent, legal guardian, power of attorney, um, some kind of authorized legal representative is the terminology we, we usually call these individuals. And what um, during the enrollment process, we're going to ask for that type of proof. So if it's a, you know, other than a parent of a minor or if the the individual with a disability is doing it themselves. Um, in those situations, then then you wouldn't require that documentation, but for everybody else, we, we would. Um, and once again, it's all that information as part of the application process. You'll see um, where that documentation needs to be uploaded into our secure website um, so we can review it. Uh, but that's kind of a high level of who owns it, but who can also hit, assist in uh, opening that account. Part of me is I keep looking over because that's uh, on this screen I have where all my questions are, and then on here is where I'm actually looking at the, the presentation. So you see my eyes keep jetting across. That's that's what's going on. Uh, at this time, I'm going to go ahead and do a quick poll uh, just to check on everybody, make sure you guys are all active. Um, before today, uh, before today's webinar, how familiar were you with Able United? Um, maybe you're very familiar, maybe this is the first time you've heard about our program and you've just recently found out about it, but you want to know more. Um, I'd be just kind of interested in to see uh, who's all attending and, and kind of your guys' background, um, and that would help during the, the Q&A section as well. Um, so take one more minute here. Uh, I think there's a few more people that need uh, give everybody a chance to answer the question. I'm looking over it. All right. I'll go ahead and close this. Um, and I do have a list of attendees, but I see some of these people look, uh, look pretty familiar. So I'll go ahead and, and close that, and I'll share it with you all uh, to kind of show you uh, we're all over the board, so some people um, pretty familiar with it, and all the way to, to haven't heard about it. So we're pretty split uh, across the board evenly. Um, so that's good to know. Uh, but yeah, thank you, thank you for taking that. So that's that's good to know. So how does the program work? Moving on to our next uh, portion here, we'll kind of dig into 
how do you go about establishing an ABLE United account? Uh, what is it going to look like? What kind of information is going to be required for you to establish one? Uh, for small enrollment, it's done completely online at ableunited.com. Um, we are through the state of Florida, so we're not a financial institution or a bank. You can't go into uh, you know, your, your bank on the corner and, and, and enroll in an ABLE account. Um, so, so our program is completely online. You would go to ableunited.com, and that, there, you, during the application process, you'll see in the top right an open an account button. Hit that, and it's going to ask for some additional information, such as, uh, first of all, who the beneficiary is, their date of birth, address, social security number. If you're doing it on behalf of somebody, we're going to request the same type of information from you. Uh, and if you are doing that on behalf of somebody else, you will have to submit some kind of uh, author, authoritative documentation, power of attorney, legal guardian. Uh, also, we have a power of attorney a form on our website now that's specific to the ABLE United program. So maybe you're a, a, um, somebody in a capacity that, that helps an individual, but you might not have guardianship or power of attorney. We see a lot of, um, you know, parents with, with newly uh, children that have become adults uh, in this type of situation. So we provide a, a, a free of charge power of attorney form that you can fill out and have that documentation ready. Uh, during the process, uh, you also we're going to upload your banking information or connect your, your checking or savings account directly to the ABLE program, uh, and then to select your investment options and, and contribute a minimum of $25. And, and so all that, in a nutshell, the whole enrollment process, takes 20 to 30 minutes depending on if you need to upload documentation uh, and how familiar you are with the investment options you want to use, which we'll cover here in a moment. Uh, let's talk about contributions. Uh, so anybody can contribute the, uh, to the account. Uh, they're considered to be completed gifts and not income to the individual with a disability, which is great. Um, so it allows family members or uh, organizations to help an individual out without uh, counting it as a resource or income towards that individual. Um, there is a, some some notes to make that the annual contribution limit on these accounts are 15000 per year from all sources. So if mom and dad put in five and grandparents put in 5000 uh, the most that can go into the rest of the, the account for the rest of the year is another 5000 for a total of 15. Um, however, there is an exception. Uh, the able to work was a part of a, a tax package legislation few, from a few years ago. Uh, with that, it now allows uh, beneficiaries who are working and not currently saving for retirement to contribute above the $15,000 limit. Uh, and so we visit our website for, for additional details, but during the contribution portion of the website, when you go to there, it's going to ask, you know, is this a typical type of contribution or would this be considered an able to work contribution for we can track those for you? Um, also, uh, you can roll over funds from a 529 college savings plan into the ABLE account. Uh, and what's unique about the 529 college savings plan rollovers is that it can be a family of a member, um, which is a, a broader term in 529 world. So it can be from a sibling, uh, uncles, aunts, uh, parents, uh, just about anything you considered a, a family member. Uh, if they had a 529 college savings plan, they could contribute that or donate it, uh, roll it over into uh, a person's ABLE account uh, or, or one of their family members' ABLE account. Uh, and that would count towards the $15,000 annual contribution limit. Uh, so if you have more than that you need to roll over, then you can roll it over uh, in consecutive years. Uh, and also important to note, if you are contributing to somebody's ABLE account, it is not considered a uh, tax deduction type of donation. It is considered a completed gift, so you couldn't write it off on your tax. Um, also, important note to rollover, so even though this is a tax advantage type of account, um, similar to like a Roth IRA, or um, you couldn't do a direct rollover from a Roth IRA or any other type of retirement account like a 401k into an ABLE program, um, these are, these are although they're tax advantage, it's not the same account, so you'd have to take all the money out of that if you want to or and pay whatever penalties in those types of accounts, uh, and then the, the proceeds can contribute up to $15,000 uh, into, into the ABLE account if that's something you're interested in doing. Um, let's talk about contributions. Um, we, we made it easier to put money into the account by uh, having a new gifting page. And so this is uh, something you'll see readily. Uh, it's right there when you first log into the account, uh, add a gifting page. Uh, and this is basically, uh, it, it 
allows you to create a unique page specifically for the individual uh, or for that person that to kind of help uh, raise money for their account. And so you're, with it, it's a, it's a couple clicks. You can select an optional savings goal uh, and it will create a, a unique URL website that you can share on social media or their email or however you want to. Uh, that allows people to contribute to your account directly. Um, and they even take debit cards for a small fee. So um, people who don't want to put their bank account information, that's an available option. Uh, and we also have the uh, online form um, that you can download if you want to submit via um, snail mail. Uh, and you can get that information on our website as well. Um, so there's multiple ways to, to try to put money into the account. Um, and that's just for friends and family. But once again, the, the beneficiary and the ALR, they can have their their bank accounts tied directly to the ABLE account to do those kind of one-time ACH transfers. Uh, and so we're talking about contributions. Uh, I'll wait till I get to the withdrawal to add in this next whole question. I think it'd be kind of uh, appropriate there. So let's talk about the investment options that we have. Um, so, you know, once again, we're talking about anybody contribute to the account, but how uh, you invest the account is up to you. And so we, we have uh, kind of a split model here. We have three pre-designed portfolio options that meet the needs of most investors, uh, a conservative, moderate, and growth. And you can see based on the kind of color coordination here, they're made up of some of the underlying funds below that. Uh, and so just depending on your risk tolerance and um, your, your overall savings objectives that you could use, uh, use this fund either way you, you think would be appropriate. Um, and maybe if you're a little bit financial savvy or maybe you don't want to really invest at all, we have some underlying fund options. Uh, our newest one, which we'll talk more on the next slide, uh, is the FDIC Savings Fund. We also have a money market fund that's kind of a, uh, a local government surplus funds trust fund that the state of Florida and different municipalities uh, use around the state to put funds in that they're not currently using. So very, very low risk, very low return. Uh, then we have a U.S. bond and a U.S. stock fund that's managed by Vanguard. And then we have an international stock fund uh, managed by BlackRock. And I usually tell people these these are entities that manages trillions of dollars uh, on behalf of our constituents. So these are mutual fund type products. And uh, it's good to know that it's not John Finch here in Tallahassee managing uh, your account who has, a, who has a, a social work kind of background. So uh, you can rest assured that it's these large entities that deal with uh, lots of funds on behalf of people that actually manages your, your money. Um, let's talk a little bit more about the FDIC savings option. Um, and basically, during our process, when we uh, before we launched, we were, uh, as we we're going and interviewing people to kind of see you know what they expected in the account, um, something that came up was an FDIC savings fund. Uh, maybe these are individuals who were looking for a way that they could put money in uh, that they don't know really what their goal is, but they didn't want to invest in the market per se. So so no market fluctuation. So uh, with our new records administrator someday. Uh, they were allowed us to tap into Bank of New York Mellon, who's their uh, overall and, and some days the subsidiary of, of BNY Mellon, that uh, has this FDIC savings option um, that, that allows you to to put something in a very, you know, low interest, but principal secure uh, type of investment vehicle. Uh, and basically, you will earn interest on it throughout. That, that interest at the end of the month will be credited back to the account. Uh, and the, the fancy way of what, how do you determine the interest rate is, uh, it's based on the upper end of the federal funds target rate established by the um, Federal Reserve Federal Open Market Committee. Uh, so whenever that interest rate gets was upgraded, um, whatever that upper limit is, minus 15 basis points. So uh, so it does fluctuate. Uh, and historically, it's, it can go anywhere between uh, one and a quarter percent. Um, but recently, due to the hike in the, that, that federal funds target rate, um, the current rate is 2.35%. So. That's good to know. Let's talk about withdrawals. Um, you know, how do you get yet money in there? It's growing. You're saving it. Um, now you want to use it for a qualified disability expense, or do you want to take some money out? Uh, you can take the money out anytime uh, for any reason you're in control. So, um, you know, it does. After you initially set up in the account, uh, it usually takes about 30 days for us to verify information if you're trying to put money in and take it money right back out. Um, so after that, though, it's usually three to five business days, depending on how you request those funds. Uh, to be taken out. Um, you can do an electronic transfer to one of those attached bank accounts. So whether it be the ALR or the, or the beneficiary, 
whatever that account is attached to. You can ACH it over, which is usually the quickest method. Um, there's also a way to submit documentation or request for uh, a check to be sent um, to an individual or to a third party. Uh, once again, earnings are tax-free as long as the withdrawals are used for qualified disability expenses. Um, and, um, and basically what's going to happen is this is an IRS sanctioned account. So what we'll do is we'll be collecting that data and we'll submit to the IRS at the end of each um, calendar year. Uh, two documentations, a 5498 and a 1099QA, uh, and basically it's going to say, you know, this person had $5,000 in withdrawals. Of that 5000 maybe 100 uh, was the earnings or 500 was earnings, uh, you know, and that's that. And as long as you can prove to the IRS that they asked you that you had $5,000 in qualified disability expenses for the year, um, then you don't have to pay any taxes. Um, but if you didn't, um, and, and let's say you took – you know, you didn't have any qualified disability expenses for the year, and you you took out five thousand dollars, and you you lost it all gambling. Um, will you be subject to pay um, taxes on the earnings portion of that five thousand? So I said I think five hundred dollars. Uh, so you you'd be subject to income tax on that five hundred dollars plus a ten percent penalty. Um, but once again, it's it's looking at the whole of the year. So as long as you have for the whole year qualified disability expenses, um, then, then you shouldn't have an issue. Uh, what's also unique is when you take money out of the account, um, you get to choose how you want to take the money out. So uh, let's say you have it set up to where you have $1,000 in some of the, in the investment options, maybe a conservative portfolio, uh, and then you have $500 in the FDIC option. When you make money out, maybe you don't want to mess with your investments, but you want to just take money out of the FDIC option, you can do that. Uh, and so that's a unique feature as well as, um, that we're now offering. Uh, and so at this time, I'm going to go ahead and ask another question. Uh, or a poll to you all to get your guys' feedback is how would you get it launched here? How would you or the individual you care for use their Able United account? Um, seeing that you can use it kind of all over the place, I'm um, just going to take a moment and you guys can click click on. Do you think you use it more long term or short term, uh, or maybe you'll use it um, a little bit of both. Give everybody a couple more seconds here to answer. All right. Give it one more second here, and I'll close down this poll. Perfect. Thank you all for answering. Let's kind of look at those uh, results here. And seeing how you know how you plan on or how you think the individual you, you care for or you would use the Able United account. So we're we got a little bit of split here. 14% um, short term expenses. Uh, great news for you. Uh, something we we will highlight on the next page or in, uh, in, in the next few pages is uh, we're going to be offering a reloadable prepaid card in the in the future. Uh, so I'll give you even easier access to your money. Um, I think it'll be a Visa card. So you, anywhere Visa is accepted. Um, so you put a little bit of both and, and not sure. Uh, and that's the great thing about an ABLE account is you can uh, put the money in there and then uh, that money that's invested, let's say, you know, you don't know at first, but then you're like, well, I'm not going to use it for, for quite a long time. You can move invested funds in an account to another uh, to another investment option up to two times a year. So once again, that, that invested funds can be rebalanced or moved to another investment option twice a year. Now, any incoming money, you get to select each time that new money is coming in, how you want to invest it. Uh, and then also, uh, something I didn't mention on the contribution slide, but then you can set up reoccurring contributions. So maybe you want to say, uh, you know, I get paid on the, the 10th of every month, maybe on the 12th of every month, I want to put in $25, and you could set that reoccurring contribution up. All right. So let's keep going here. Uh, and so at this point, we the big question is now that we you understand, okay, uh, it's an all online product. Uh, I understand it's a tax advantage savings account. Um, you know, it's how we contribute, how we withdraw, what the purpose of the account is, you know, using it for qualified disability expenses, but you can use it for short, short term or long term expenses. How much does it cost? Uh, and that's the great thing about um, this being run by the state of Florida and, and getting the support to, to run this program from both the Florida Prepaid College Board as well as um, um, Florida legislators is uh, that there's no cost to open and maintain the account. We want to make this the best value for Florida residents. 
given the, the broadest options to, to, to get in and try to see if it, um, you know, if it works for them. So there's no application fee. Uh, we don't have a monthly uh, account maintenance fee. Um, so that's, that's pretty unique to our program. Um, there is a, a minimum contribution when you first get in, enrolled in the program to make sure the program gets set up correctly or the, your account gets set up correctly. There is an optional uh, paper fee. So if you want to get your paper statements mailed in, um, you know, quarterly, that's a $10 annual fee. Uh, so you can, you know, let's that's optional. And then our investment administration fees that help pay for some of the program and, and investment costs, uh, those range from zero to 0.29% annualized. Um, so about 29 cents for every $100 in the account. Uh, and that SDIC investment option has no fee. So you could literally open the account, put the $25 in, um, and, and, you know, there would be no fees associated with your account. So we, we do try to make it um, appealing to those that would like to invest in this account. All right, now switching gears a little bit here, um, let's talk about third-party special needs trust. Uh, this is a pretty popular topic, and we've done previous webinars on it, but what if an individual you're serving or uh, who's looking at an Able United account already has a third-party special needs trust, or maybe you're just curious about what the differences are um, between these type of accounts. So uh, high level, we'll just do a high level look over uh, of the difference between them. Um, so, and, and, and the caveat right at the top is that usually, uh, you know, ABLE accounts often work in conjunction with a third-party special needs trust. We used to have a stating that, you know, if, um, you know, this is a tool for your financial tool belt when you're when you're planning for somebody with a disability. So high-level third-party national special needs trust can be used to fund ABLE accounts. Um, it just depends on the provisions of your of your special needs trust. Discuss that with an attorney. Um, special needs trust plan is part of a state planning. So with that. You know, it, it, you could put things that are not cash assets in them, um, life insurance policies, homes, et cetera. Um, with that, you're going to have to have a trustee uh, oversee the account. Um, it does require an attorney to set up, so that, those can be costly uh, to go that thing. Um, you know, there's some additional ongoing fees uh, to, to maintain a special needs trust. Um, so, so, you know, that's the high level what a third-party special needs trust does, and it's only third-party money. So. Uh, the person with the disability can't put their own money in. Um, so we'll talk about ABLE accounts. They're a little bit more flexible. Uh, you can use them for a variety of expenditures, including paying for food and shelter without reducing somebody's benefits if they're on SSI. So uh, in-kind support maintenance is something somebody might uh, be familiar with where, uh, you know, I'm on SSI, but since mom and dad pay my my utility bill, my, my SSI check gets, you know, um, you know, reduced because of that. Now with the ABLE account, mom and dad put that money in the ABLE account and the ABLE account pays the utility bill, uh, there wouldn't be an impact on their SSI, just as an example. Uh, the money in the account can grow tax-free, so that's another um, benefit. Um, like I said, online enrollment is free. Um, we're, we, you know, we're not uh, at a bank. We're not sold by a, a, uh, an insurance or a financial company. Um, it can be administered by the individual with a disability, the beneficiary, or a third party. Um, but there is a restriction. You only put $15,000 in contributions per year into an ABLE account, uh, not including those ABLE to work. So you can kind of high level see the difference between the two. Uh, and like I said, uh, often they work in conjunction with each other. We see a lot of funding coming from a, a, a trust into an ABLE account, um, and then the ABLE account can, can help pay for those daily living expenditures or, or give some flexibility that uh, instead of having to go to a trustee, it's them, them going through the process to, to get funds out. Before I get to our questions, uh, I want to do some common questions about ABLE that we usually receive after a presentation, and hopefully this will answer uh, some of your questions, but then feel free, a uh, good time opportunity right now to go ahead and get any questions you might have submitted to the, um, uh, into uh, the queue here. Uh, all right, so let's talk about uh, what is ABLE United. Is ABLE United an insurance financial for-profit company? Uh, no. So ABLE United, we're a registered not-for-profit and managed by the Florida Prepaid College Board. Uh, we're a state agency. So if you think of uh, Florida Prepaid, Florida 529 College Savings Plan, so these are uh, state-run college savings-type plans uh, run by Florida Prepaid, 
uh, College Board, um, which is under the State Board of Administration, that's a, a state entity that kind of manages that. Well, ABLE falls under that purview. So we're, we're managed. I'm a state employee. Um, I'm calling you from my office here in Tallahassee, but, uh, you know, we, we're under the Florida prepaid as, as one of the uh, programs that they manage. Uh, so who owns the ABLE United account? We often get that question. Um, you know, well, if the you know, person overseeing the account, is it their money? Uh, you know, they might be in charge of the money, but actually the, the beneficiary, that individual with disability, they're the ones that owns the money. Um, and, and so ultimately it's their money uh, and it's, you know, to be used to help support them. So, uh, but we know uh, that there's a lot of cases where somebody else might help them with the day-to-day -day or manage that account, uh, but the money is actually uh, the person with the disability. Excuse me as I drink some water. Uh, can the individual with a disability put their own money into an ABLE United account? And yes, uh, like we said earlier, anybody can contribute, uh, the beneficiary, mom and dad, organization. Um, uh, I think the, the actual language is a person was considered a, a nonprofit, for example, or a church. Um, it is limited to 15000 per year from all sources. However, individuals working and not saving for retirement can contribute above that $15,000 limit. Uh, let's look at some additional common questions we receive. Um, you know, if I move out of state, do I have to close my ABLE United account and open an ABLE account in the state I moved to? Uh, and so, no. Uh, although uh, online, the, the program itself is online. At the time of enrollment, you have to be a Florida resident. Uh, but if you move the next day or, or several years down the road, you can take the ABLE United account with you. Uh, it is all online. Our customer service number is toll free. Uh, you know, that's 9 to 6 Eastern time. So you could reach out to those contacts, interact with your account um, from anywhere uh, that you have on, online access to. Uh, but we usually recommend people, if you are moving out of the state, to just to check into that state's, um, you know, uh, ABLE program, what benefits they might have. There might be some unique uh, tax advantage programs. If a state has a state tax, for example, there might be some, some benefits if, if you have an ABLE account with their program. Uh, and then last but not least, and I mentioned this, um, talking about the investment side of things, if you want to change how you're currently invested, um, you know, federal law only allows two invested fund changes per calendar year, and that's, that's invested funds in the account, uh, similar to 529 college savings plan. Um, but, you know, incoming money at any time, you can change how you want that to go. And when you take money out, you get to choose which funds you want to withdraw from. Um, those are all uh, ways you could uh, change how you're invested in the account. So at this time, I want to go ahead and highlight um, some questions we usually ask people during this part of the presentation to see if this is something that them or somebody they, they, they help might be beneficial if an ABLE United account uh, is right for them, basically. Uh, so so may, the, some, some of the key ones is, you know, are you looking for a way to save money without losing or impacting your government benefits? Uh, and, and to to use these funds to help pay for some of those basic living expenses like housing, transportation, education, um, an ABLE account would be appropriate. Are you looking for a way to for your money to potentially earn interest tax-free? So maybe um, you know you have a child, a small child with a disability, and you want to just put money aside because you don't know what what's going to happen when they turn 18 or 22 and they're out of the school system and um, what that looks like. Uh, and, and now you have a way to to make your your funds go further with uh, tax-free uh, growth. Um, maybe you have family and friends that want to assist um, but don't want to impact somebody's eligibility for government benefits uh, or compromise them. So uh, an ABLE account can, can, can accept those types of funds without impacting that. Uh, and another one we see quite often is, um, you know, maybe it's somebody that is already receiving benefits from the state uh, or from the federal government, uh, but they're in a spin-down situation where they're just a little bit over that $2,000 resource limit each month. Um, and, and they need a place instead of just buying some more unneeded items, they could save an enable account uh, and then use it for, for a future expense that, that is needed to help them um, in, in the future. So uh, those are some high level ways that people can go ahead and uh, use their ABLE account. And so that, that is our program. Um, I know I see several questions coming in. Uh, uh, and once again, I recommend everybody, if you have a chance, to go ahead and download those handouts. Uh, it's our presentation for today as well as uh, our program description participation agreement that really dives into the, the nuts and bolts of ABLE account, terms and conditions, et cetera. 
so let's look at these questions here. Uh, I'll pull them up real fast. Um, I work for a nonprofit. The prior administrator has left the company. Prior to leaving, they established several ABLE accounts. How can I gain access to the account? Um, and I know this person, and this person we have been talking uh, via email, uh, and, and so uh, hopefully we'll, we'll work on that situation offline. Um, but uh, we have several forms that are available online and through customer service. So if you're in a situation where maybe you need to have an ALR change, that authorized legal representative, we have forms that are available that you can uh, assist a, a beneficiary or a person with a disability to take back over their account or to appoint a, a new ALR. Uh, so those are all things. Uh, next question, what is the maximum tax write-off for a gift to an ABLE United uh, account? So, so yes, yeah, so, so uh, contributions into an ABLE account are uh, considered completed gifts, so they're not a tax write-off. So um, that's why uh, if you notice that the $15,000 limit is actually based on the gifting tax limit. Um, so, so yeah, so these are not considered to be donations, um, but is a, a, a completed gift. Uh, is an ABLE United account considered uh, to determine a financial aid package for college? Good question. So what about the FAFSA application? Um, and so um, based on the intent of legislation uh, that, that passed as well as how it's written that any uh, government uh, program that has some kind of needs-based um, criteria that looks at a person's asset, an ABLE account should not be subject to that. Um, to that. So uh, I know in the past we had an individual who um, a daughter was applying for, for uh, FAFSA, but the father had an ABLE account with money in it, and the question arose, you know, did the, did the any release that the father has an ABLE account? Uh, and as I get fine to state that, um, the ABLE account should not be subject um, to, to any kind of um, needs-based um, filing. Um, other popular ones are, are SNAP, so the, the Food Administration put out documentation to say, hey, uh, when it comes to the supplemental nutrition um, kind of benefits, uh, ABLE accounts should not count for that. Um, so we're waiting on documentation from HUD, but Medicaid, Social Security, uh, a lot of the other need-based uh, have, have released stating that ABLE accounts are not subject to that. Um, another question is, what about uh, filing taxes? So uh, as I alluded to a little bit earlier, uh, What's going to happen is these are tax advantage accounts, so these are IRS sanctioned accounts, and you'll get uh, two forms from us at the end of the year, uh, or potentially two. One is a 5498 uh, QA that basically high level says this person had an ABLE account. Here's the eligibility, why they, you know, why they qualify, what type of disability, um, and, and then um, the, the basically account balance of it. Uh, the other one is if you have a withdrawal during the year, you'll get a 1099 QA. On uh, that 1099 QA will kind of outline the withdrawal amount um, of that withdrawal amount, how much was considered to be earnings, uh, and then and that's it. There is there is no filing. Now, if you took money out and the whole year you didn't prove to the IRS that you had any qualified disability expenses, uh, then you'd be subject to pay on any uh, the gains portion of any um, withdrawals you had on the account. Uh, so I think I think the example I gave earlier is, you know, maybe you took out five thousand dollars, you went gambling, and you didn't have any other qualified disability expenses for the year. Um, you know, you didn't have housing or transportation. Um, then you have to go to the IRS and say, okay, of that five thousand, based on this tax form, five hundred dollars was interest. Then not five hundred dollars, you would have to pay income tax and a ten percent only. Um, you know, I think what's what's unique about this program and, and unique by IRS is they're looking at the whole calendar year. So, you know, as long as you can prove and have receipts to say, hey, for the whole year, uh, I yes, I had $5,000 of qualified disability expenses, then there, there shouldn't be an, an issue. All right, I'm kind of looking at um, question about 529 and Florida prepaid. I, I do suggest, you know, if you have questions related to uh, the program we're under, Florida Prepaid, check out um, the My Florida Prepaid website. Uh, I think we're in open enrollment right now through the rest of the month, but that's you can find all your your uh, meeting when it comes to college savings on that end. Uh, but that looks like to be it for questions. Uh, so I'll go ahead and put our contact information on there. Uh, and before we go, though, I'll go ahead and pop out one uh, new thing. 
Uh, something we talked about was some exciting features that we got going on. Uh, we just launched, we have uh, several new features that we just launched, an FDIC option, a new gifting page, um, and we also, uh, um, the ability to choose what you withdraw from, that's a, a new feature we have. And so just think about which one do you kind of look like uh, you think you'd be interested in seeing. Uh, this would be good feedback for, for some of our customers. Uh, and something I didn't mention was live customer service. Now that we're on this final screen here, uh, how do you get a hold of us? Uh, you can call us. Um, we have TTY as well. Um, and then we also have live chat on our website. So if you go to our website, there's a little icon on the bottom right. Usually it pops up um, if a service member is available and you can chat your, your questions. So a great way to, to, to look at us. Um, I'll give you a couple more seconds to say, you know, what kind of feature are you interested in that you think would be, um, you know, something we didn't previously have but you thought would be great to, to use moving forward. I'll go ahead and close that poll, and that's good for us to know. Uh, well, thank you all for your time today. That kind of concludes our webinar. As always, if you have questions, please reach out to our customer service. They're uh, well trained to answer your questions, and then uh, I do, you know, if questions arise and you don't uh, can't get them to answer it, uh, you know, they usually report back to me. Uh, also, look for us on our website, uh, ableunited.com. There you will find any events that are going on, uh, any upcoming webinars, or, or places we'll be out in the community. So uh, I just want to thank you all uh, for taking the time uh, to act um, and to take some time of your day to, to answer any questions you might have about um, our program. Uh, and as, as, uh, as this concludes our presentation, thank you all, and hopefully Abel will help you achieve a better life experience. Thank you.